March Madness is underway. Hear how Wisconsin's Trayvon Jackson plans to lead his team to the title. Through him, you can be extraordinary. And then. I want to win. Second stinks. MMA star Patrick Hutton meets his match. I just remember cussing and screaming all night. Plus, war-torn refugees find a new home on today's 700 Club. Welcome, folks, to this edition of the 700 Club. We welcome you to a new week of programs, and we hope it's a blessing to you. Well, the word was no signs of life. That's what officials are saying after a mile-wide mudslide devastated Washington state this weekend. Dozens of homes have been destroyed, and many residents are still missing. Search and rescue crews are still on the scene, working their way through quicksand-like conditions and searching for survivors. Charlene Aaron has more. Rescue crews work through the night, digging through mud at least 15 feet deep in some areas. The conditions are very, very muddy. At, in places, it is still like quicksand. Other areas are just, they're just not accessible at this time. Authorities believe the slide was caused by recent heavy rain. At least 30 homes were destroyed or damaged, buried when the side of the mountain came crashing down. Total devastation. And this is unbelievable. Um, it, it reminds me of what a tornado looks like when it's touched the ground. There really is no stick standing in the path of the slide. The mud covers about one square mile. Some victims were able to get out on their own. Sean Wright quickly went from being a victim to a first responder when he heard people crying for help. Screams. Just people sounded at one point. I heard a baby scream. Wright and several other people were able to use chainsaws to get the mother and baby out of the remains of their home. Where we got her was just debris. There, you couldn't tell anything was houses. It was just all debris. Crews have not been able to search the entire area of debris. Only the areas determined to be safe enough to move across. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Thanks, Charlene. Um, a few years ago in the so-called Cold War, um, I did a speech to the uh, Council on Foreign, I mean, the uh, whatever we call it, the, the uh, group that was dealing with these issues. And uh, it was clear to me that Russia was <clears throat> a paper tiger, that they didn't have an infrastructure. The industry was collapsing. Their, their roads were horrible. I mean, they were like, you know, third world in much of the uh, face. And now uh, Vladimir Putin is sticking his chest out and trying to show what a big shot he is. But the truth is that the economy, as they said today in the Wall Street Journal, a Potemkin economy, he is in serious trouble. But now he's rattling his saber with the possibility of uh, invading eastern Ukraine, and our people say there's nothing they can do about it. Well, I think there is, but maybe with a feckless president we can't. John Jessup has more of our top stories from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. Here's John. Pat, there's growing concern of a military conflict in Ukraine. In Crimea this weekend, Russian troops took two Ukrainian military bases by force. They even held 80 Ukrainian Marines captive. Russia annexed Crimea last week, a move the U.S. and the European Union don't recognize. President Obama is in the Netherlands meeting with European leaders about the crisis. They've leveled sanctions against Russian officials and banks. But with 20,000 Russian troops amassed on the Ukrainian border, even that response appears to have little impact. Here is Vladimir Putin with a failing Soviet franchise. And when he can't win the hearts and minds of his neighboring nations, he uses energy extortion, mass gunmen, and barbed wire. Now, he is a bully, and we've got a calling for what he is. But this notion that some sanction is going to stop a formal colonel in the HEB from his ambitions of a Russian empire is naive. We don't know what Putin has in his mind and what would be his uh, decision. That's why the situation is becoming even more explosive, explosive than it used to be a week ago. Even a top White House official admits Russia could attack Ukraine. On CNN's State of the Union, Deputy National Security Advisor Tony Blinken said Russia might invade eastern Ukraine and there's nothing the U.S. can do to stop it. 
What Vladimir Putin is doing in Ukraine is only one cause for concern. For years, he's also been rolling out a Soviet-style crackdown on freedoms in Russia, including religious freedom. And many ex-Soviet states have been following suit. Paul Strand reports. Representatives from all over the former Soviet Union gathered on Capitol Hill to bemoan what's happening to religious liberty in that Eurasian region. Sadly, the truth is, government continues to persecute and punish believers in much of the ex-Soviet Union. The head of the Russian American Institute talked to CBN News about the dire realities in Russia, where it appears Vladimir Putin is set on cracking down after years when it looked like he was on the side of religious liberty. We call it Putin 1 and Putin 2. When Putin first came to power, he was a positive influence. But after his second term, uh, he began to roll back a lot of the religious freedom issues, human rights issues, assembly it's a, been a very difficult direction that we're going in right now. Dr. Mikhail Cherenkov was also pessimistic as he looked at the lack of liberty across the many former Soviet states. Uh, we have uh, new restrictions from government and also from society. I mean uh, uh, Islamic society and orthodox, nominal orthodox society. So this is uh, new challenges for, for evangelical church and for civil society as well. Dr. Birnbaum was quick to point out with the immensity of the former USSR, it's really hard to generalize. But he said what he's seeing across Eurasia is not very hopeful. I mean, these leaders in these Asian republics are copying the Russian model, mm. eliminating opposition, eliminating the free press, eliminating the right for opposition candidates to form political parties. Lawmakers stopped by to wish these Eurasian religious leaders well, including one of Congress's lead fighters for religious freedoms internationally. I just want you to know my heart is with you, and I, I, I don't think you could be doing a greater work. Uh, religious freedom is the foundation of all human freedom. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. In the United Kingdom, new signs that the country is recognizing Islamic Sharia law. It comes after the acceptance of new guidelines for Sharia-compliant wills. That's according to The Telegraph, a British newspaper. The move could allow lawyers to legally draft Islamic wills, even if they discriminate against non-Muslims, women, and adopted children. Such wills could give a woman a smaller share of an inheritance than men, prevent unbelievers from receiving any inheritance, and exclude adopted children. Critics warn the guidelines are a step towards establishing a parallel Islamic legal system in the UK. CBN reporters in Jerusalem are among dozens of journalists in Israel who received threatening text messages over the weekend. The senders identified themselves as Al Qassam, the military wing of Hamas. One message read, Al Qassam has chosen you to be the next Shalit. Be ready. Gilad Shalit, an Israeli soldier, was abducted and held in Gaza for five years. Another message read, if Gaza is attacked, then the life of the Zionists will be hell. The Foreign Press Association said the recipients apparently had come from a carefully selected database set up by the military wing of Hamas. Well, in Jerusalem, thousands of runners from around the world gathered this weekend to race the Jerusalem Marathon. As Chris Mitchell reports, they're literally running through history. Some 26,000 runners gathered for the fourth annual Jerusalem Marathon. 2,500 of them came from 55 nations to run the race. We're going to see the beauty of the city, the most beautiful city in the world. The marathon course runs throughout Jerusalem, but the highlight for many is the opportunity to run through Jerusalem's old city here at the Jaffa Gate. For me, it's a dream come true as a marathon runner, somebody that understands how um, marathons lift cities, showcase the city of Jerusalem. So it's a wonderful day. There are three main races, a 10-kilometer, a half marathon, and a full 42-kilometer, 26.2-mile marathon. There's also an 800-meter half-mile race to raise money for the needy. Jerusalem Mayor Nair Barkat came up with the idea for a marathon. He also runs in the race. Having such a strong, wonderful, referenceable international marathon, we're actually becoming on the short list of marathons that somebody that all want to do at least once in their lifetime. The course is challenging since Jerusalem is, as the Bible says, a city set on a hill. This is my first lonely marathon. Um, the one place I'll do it is Jerusalem. It's supposed to be the hardest and it's supposed to be also the best fun. These Americans came with a message. I want to spread this message all over the world. I am here to run on holy ground 26.2 miles, 42 kilometers. I wish I can run barefooted. 
Yes, I have to respect this land. It's a holy land and I love it dearly. I am running barefoot. Why? Because I will be in good company with, with many other holy people that have traversed these streets and these hills barefoot. Some have a cause. And we are raising uh, money for UCLH Cancer Research um, in London. Others will take a new message back when they go home. What we used to get is the, is the need from the news. Israel or Jerusalem is uh, quite a dangerous place. But after we visit, I think it's a very good and nice city. We will spread out the message to our friends that Israel or Jerusalem is a, is a safe place to visit. And a very nice view, nice city. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jaffa Gate, Jerusalem. The film God's Not Dead made a strong debut this weekend, landing at number five at the box office. It earned just over eight and a half million dollars, even though it aired on only 780 theaters nationwide. The other films in the top five appeared on more than 3,000 screens. God's Not Dead earned a per theater average of nearly $11,000. That's the second highest in the top five. And Pat, Christian films have been on a roll, doing extremely well lately. Well, the producers are doing a terrific job, and I'm, I congratulate them. And we did an interview with the uh, uh, lead actor who played Hercules, by the way, in mm -hmm. previous films. He, he's the uh, lead in the God's Not Dead film. It looked like a really good movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I commend it for you. Terry. Well, coming up, we don't have spring fever, just a severe case of March madness. We're going to chat with Wisconsin's Trayvon Jackson. That's later on today's show. But first, we'll take a tour of a tent city home to more than two million refugees. Hear how they escaped the Civil War. That's coming up next. You had your grandpa named Pop, right? They died when I was your age. I saw him in heaven. What if an ordinary boy... Is this him? That's Pop. Your son had a near-death experience. Discovered the answer to life's most extraordinary question. Do you think my son went to heaven? He told me everything was all right. Based on the incredible true story... We all want to be supportive. I want to believe him. But everything he talks about is impossible. Will you believe? You saw heaven? It's beautiful. Heaven is for real. See it this Easter. Read it PG. So with Vonage Home Phone Service, you get unlimited calling in the U.S. and to over 60 countries from this phone and from this phone. On my home phone and my mobile phone? One calling plan, two phones. Esto y esto? Si y si. Really? Two phones? One low monthly rate. You got it. Mm. On this phone. And this one? Yes. And pretend yes. It's your last chance to double your savings on our best offer ever. Find out how at Vonage.com. Offer ends March 31st. Tuesday, what would you do if your church allowed Muslims to pray at the altar? Here's how one woman responded. Find out why she risked her life to criticize Islam. Plus, is your head throbbing? America's pharmacist Susie Cohen has the headache remedy. She'll show you how to stop them and prevent them from starting again. Tuesday on The 700 Club. Well, our foreign policy has been announced as, quote, leading from behind. We wanted somebody else to do it for us, and we didn't want to get involved in that Syrian civil war. We weren't sure who, who we could support. Well, the consequences are alarming. The numbers are staggering. More than 100,000 people have been killed in that Syrian uh, civil war, and more than 2 million have fled for their lives. The Syrian civil war has taken its toll, and Christians are among the top casualties. Our Gary Lane brings us their stories from Iraq and Lebanon. Another Syrian government barrel bomb explodes on rebel positions. Innocent civilians caught in the crossfire leave the country in droves. The crisis is perhaps the most severe since World War II, and no end appears in sight. According to the United Nations, more than two million Syrians are now registered refugees in neighboring countries. Most live in tent cities like this one, Kawargos camp in northern Iraq. Fighting between Islamists and Kurdish militiamen forced this widow and her children to abandon their wheat farm. The UN has given them food and blankets, 
But she says she lacks money to buy fresh fruit and vegetables for her children. And it's not just northern Iraq where refugees are pouring over the border each day. I'm in Lebanon's Bekaa Valley. Refugees are still coming in here. This camp is only six months old. Many of the Syrians living in tents here have yet to register with the UN. So they're turning to Christian groups and others for help. Faiz arrived here from northeast Syria just days before we met him. The militias were bombing and we were without electricity and water. Our city was surrounded by the Free Syria Army and Jabhat al-Nusra. They are kidnapping Christians. It's a very bad situation. Faiz's family now lives with his brother Kamal's family, who arrived six months ago. A total of 13 people cramped in this small two-room apartment. Faiz feels safer in Lebanon, free from the militants destroying Syria's ancient Christian community. They're trying to kick all the Christians out of the country. A Christian friend of mine was working construction, building a government school. They killed him and stole his truck. They don't have any compassion or mercy for us Christians. But groups like CBN partner Heart for Lebanon are showing much compassion for the refugees. Those like young Mohammed. His family set up this small tent on farmland in southern Lebanon. The tent leaked when it rained. So a Heart for Lebanon worker convinced the property owner to let the family live in this shed. Mohammed stopped attending school more than two years ago shortly after the Syrian civil war began. He's a good boy, and he's, uh, he wants to go to the school. All 12? Years? Old. He's 12 years old. Pakistani education activist Malala Yousafza tours a Syrian refugee camp in Jordan. She and others worry Mohammed and his generation may lose any access to education. In 2012, a Taliban terrorist shot Malala as she returned home from school. She's now a global advocate for girls' education. But young refugees need more than education, food, and housing. Many, like 13-year-old Hamad, desperately need medical care. He was born without fully developed legs. Hamad endured a strenuous journey to Lebanon. There's only one bone instead of two bones like the rest of us would have. You can see it doesn't attach correctly down here. That's not how the tibia would normally be on top of the talus. And you have the whole fibula is missing. Not only did Heart for Lebanon provide Hamid with a comfortable mattress and food for his family, they also helped arrange leg surgery. Now with more help, Hamid may eventually walk. They're also helping others with war injuries like 18-year-old Faraj. When we first met him last summer, Faraj needed his mother's help walking. Today, he's walking on his own. Faraj nearly died in home Syria when a rocket exploded in his living room, tossing him like a rag doll from a second-story balcony. The fall broke his arm and hot shrapnel tore into his chest and back. He says he's doing much better now thanks to medical care and other help provided by CBN partner Heart for Lebanon. I asked if he would like to return to Syria to be a fighter. No, I wouldn't want to be a soldier, he says. He'd prefer to return to work in the clothing industry. Faraj wants Americans to pray for him. Pray that God will heal me and that I will walk normally. Perhaps one day, all the way from Lebanon, back to his Syrian home. From the Bekaa Valley, Gary Lane, CBN News. Thanks, Gary. Tremendous uh, suffering. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, the suffering that goes on around the world is beyond measure. We have it so good here in America. So if there's one thing you should never do is complain, you ought to thank God for this land we live in and do everything you can to preserve it. But at the same time, as a great nation, we, we're the ones that the whole world looks to uh, for freedom, for liberty, for opportunity. And uh, we can't default on that. Uh, we can't do it. We need leadership uh, who understand the role that it's more than just making a declaration like there'll be a line in the sand and ignoring it. There'll be a red line and ignoring it. This is the line you can't cross. We ignore it. But Bashar Assad has ignored all those red lines and has gone ahead to do whatever he wants to do. Terry? Well, coming up, the sharpshooter who's on the biggest stage playing for an audience of one. We'll hit the court with point guard Trayvon Jackson. 
And then we'll meet a fighter who almost knocked himself out. Hear how a world famous boxer put him back in the ring when we return. A great flood is coming. The storm cannot be stopped, but it can be survived. We have to protect our family. Do you want to live? Is this the end of everything? Beginning. Noah, rated PG 13. Hi, I'm Wayne Allen Root, former presidential candidate, conservative national media personality, best-selling author, and true blue patriot. I call what we're living in today the Great Depression II. More Americans now receive government entitlements than work full-time. The typical family earns less today than in 1989. I understand exactly what's happening to this economy and how you can protect yourself. So I sat down and taped a 30 minute DVD on the topic with all the critical steps needed to ensure Americans can both survive and thrive in 2014. It's called The Timeless Truth About Money. And it's only available in this special TV offer by calling the number below or by visiting online. Thanks to Swiss America, you'll finally understand the true goal of Obamacare how our trillions in debt will sink the economy, and most importantly, why your golden years require a whole new golden strategy. Call now. I was having some pains between my shoulder blades. At that point, everything changed. Diagnosis, pancreatic cancer. First, there was prayer. The second is to fight. As soon as we walked through those doors at Cancer Treatment Centers of America, all my anxiety left. The pastoral care here is based on the Bible, based on the Word of God, just as it is at our own church. When you combine the great medicine with the spiritual resources we have, it provides the patients with something that really can make a difference. You got a pastor right there on staff praying with patients, and whether it be scripture or whether it just be a word of encouragement to say, God's got this. If you or someone you love is fighting complex or advanced stage cancer, go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. You'll learn how our treatment results compare to national averages and see a list of insurance plans with which we've worked. Advanced medicine and technology, the warm embrace of the spirit. I firmly believe God led me here. Call or go to cancercenter.com. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Appointments available now. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to cbn.com. Well, it's a mass extravaganza of college basketball that is known as March Madness. And we're just a few days into March Madness, and that probably means your bracket is already busted. So far, second-ranked Wisconsin has managed to avoid the upset bus. But recently, sports reporter Sean Brown sat down with the Majors Trayvon Jackson and found out where he gets his strength. Wisconsin point guard Trayvon Jackson is making a name for himself as a clutch player. Now in his junior year, this is his second year as a starter, and he hopes to follow the path of his father, former NBA All-Star Jim Jackson. Trayvon says as the son of an NBA veteran, people had high expectations for him the moment he stepped on the court. But it's his faith in the Lord that has helped to keep the comparisons in perspective. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm not gonna lie, I'm good. But I'm not that good without the Lord's presence. Like, I'm just average. But when, through him, you can be extraordinary. After sitting the bench for most of his freshman year, Trayvon came off the bench early last season, and he won the starting job. He says the key to turning that around was hard work and focusing on the Lord. Like, I just felt that he wasn't, and when I wasn't in his presence, it was when I started to worry. It's when I started to, you know, worry about failure and just not play and not play loose and but when I was with him everything was just you know I'm out there like are you not stopping me in the last two seasons Trayvon has emerged as a leader as a point guard he understands that his role is to put the team before himself but to him it's more than just part of the job it's following Christ's example I, I, I knew about it, like, man, you know, he died on the cross. But as I'm digging and I'm seeking the kingdom, I'm seeking it, just to really see what he did was just truly amazing. Like, I could never fathom it, like, until I'm starting to really see his principles, see his ways. And uh, it just makes me want to emulate more, him even more. And I want to do everything 
to represent him the way that, that I'm supposed to. As Trayvon leads the Badgers into another NCAA tournament, he wants all to hear this message. Just seek the kingdom, just seek his word, you know, seek the ways of his righteousness, and, and he'll give you everything. He says it in his word, I'll give you everything and more. So. While NBA scouts and fans are probing into his stats, Trayvon says he hopes they'll see that he is more than just his father's son. I want them to see, uh, like, something about that kid is just, you know, out of the ordinary. And then when they do that, I'll be able to redirect that from me up to him. That's the biggest thing I want them to see, because uh, I can care less about me. I just want to just spread, give all the glory and the praise to, to, to the kingdom and to the Lord, to, to Jesus Christ, because um, without him, I'm nothing. Boy, that young man's got it right. Without him, I'm nothing. You know, that's what the Bible says. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I will not share with another. The Apostle Paul said, without him, I can do nothing. My lips would turn to clay. I'm, I'm nothing. Without him, I am everything. Uh, with him, I'm everything. Without him, I'm nothing. Well, uh, we'll keep watching this young man. I'm sure he's going to go on to the professionals and do very well, but he's got it straight, and I ask the same thing for all of us. Let's put priorities where they should be, and the first thing is to serve the Lord. Terry? Well, Trayvon, the Badgers, and 15 other teams will slug it out over the next few weeks to determine who's number one. That's the kind of stuff that makes Patrick Hutton salivate. He's the type of guy who puts his game face on whenever he walks down the street. Patrick lives for competition, and one day he found himself fighting for his own soul. I go in saying I'm going to win. He's going in saying he's going to win. I want to win. Second stinks. Mixed martial arts fighter Patrick Bam Bam Hutton has always wanted to be the best, no matter what sport he plays. Baseball, football, basketball, boxing, cross country, track, anything. I love to compete. I mean, that's it. If me and you thumb wrestle right now and I lose, I'm going to be mad. I want to have a rematch. Growing up in a small town in Illinois, Patrick was a scrappy kid who loved to spar with boys in the neighborhood. I'm not a mean person, but I like the competitiveness and I like the rough house, I like the hit. As an athlete in high school and college, he was disciplined because he knew that's what it took to be the best. I think uh, my parents disciplined me in life. I have to give a lot of credit for discipline in sports to coaches. After college, he landed a good job, but now there were no sports or coaches to keep him disciplined. What he did have was time on his hands and money to spend. Limousines, probably VIP at the clubs, VIP tables, beautiful women, maybe some celebrities hanging out with them, professional big time athletes, drinking drugs, a lot of women, $1,000 tabs, just living like a rock star. And he acted like he was one. Patrick began competing professionally in mixed martial arts. Now he carried around an ego bigger than his bar tabs and all the friends money could buy but his lifestyle was affecting something much more important to him. I was out of control with cocaine and I did it in front of my baby brother who I would never hurt, ever. He told my older brother and he said, uh, um, we needed to talk, I denied it. Then he said something else to me and it, it made me mad. I threw it in the toilet and it ruined the rest of my night and I just remember cussing and screaming all night. Patrick knew things needed to change. I was like, you know what, man? I've done the party scene, and I started going to church. Not just any church, but one pastored by his boxing idol, George Foreman. People always say, you only go there because of George Foreman. I said, it doesn't matter. God uses him as a tool, and he used him to get me in that church. Through Pastor Foreman's mentorship, Patrick realized he needed to give his life to Christ. I think that deep down in my heart, that I wanted to be a better person, to be a better Christian, and I stopped doing it on my own. Jesus Christ is, you know, is the Son of God. I mean, he's, he's died for all my sins. He's the reason why I'm here today. Patrick still competes in mixed martial arts with his usual discipline and focus. He also works with autistic children. I get the absolute worst of the worst behavior kids at my school. I use my experiences. They'll say, oh, you did this, you did that. I say, yeah, it's not good. 
I mentor kids all the time too in fighting. Kids that want to be fighters that are just regular kids too. I think my job is to help as many people as I can in the best way that I can. And he believes the only way he can do that is through Jesus Christ. Some of the things that Jesus did that makes me want to be like him, he was loving, he was caring, he was forgiving, he was honest. He walked the perfect walk so I could make mistakes and learn and be better. You've heard two amazing athletes talk about really excelling in what they do and yet finding that without Christ, they were empty and had nothing. Maybe today you're feeling that emptiness. You know, the good news is that Jesus is available to all who call upon his name. You too can find the peace, the satisfaction, the purpose, the wholeness that they found. And if you'd like to know more about how to do that, just call the toll-free number that's on your screen. It's 1-800-759-0700. Well, still ahead, we've got an all-star edition of Bring It On. Belinda says, should we prepare and stock up on food for the end times, or should I believe God will provide? Our resident expert will tackle that question and more, and that's next. You had your grandpa named Pop, right? He died when I was your age. I saw him in heaven. What if an ordinary boy... Is this him? That's Pop. Your son had a near-death experience. Discovered the answer to life's most extraordinary question. Do you think my son went to heaven? He told me everything was all right. Based on the incredible true story... We all want to be supportive. I want to believe him. But everything he talks about is impossible. Will you believe? You saw heaven? It's beautiful. Heaven is for real. See it this Easter. Read it PG. Welcome back to the 700 Club. A Chinese military plane spotted several floating objects in the Indian Ocean in the search for missing Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. The crew reported a white, square-shaped object in an area identified by satellite imagery as possible debris from the missing airliner. Australian officials also are analyzing radar images provided by France, which shows potential floating debris. Meanwhile, the search for the Boeing 777, missing since March 8th, has expanded to parts further south in the southern Indian Ocean. CBN is reaching children in Cambodia through Super Kids Club, a TV show produced by CBN. More than 2,000 children attended a recent Super Kids Club event in southeast Cambodia. Children were encouraged to be good students and good examples to their friends through songs, dance, and games. The children also listened to a Bible message and participated in prayer. And more than 1,000 children prayed to receive Jesus as their Savior. A local church will follow up with those who want to know more about Jesus. And you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by logging on to CBN.com international. Pat and Terry will be back right after this. Look at this amazing before and after. See why every year Lifestyle Lift wins. Over 6 million individuals just like you have already called. These people are real, the photos untouched. Imagine what a Lifestyle Lift will do for you. Learn how easy it is today. Like the millions before you, call for your free gift pack because we are the nation's number one choice for people like you who want to look and feel younger. Their stories began like yours with an easy free phone call because like you, they cared about not looking old anymore. They look amazing, youthful, and energetic. Join countless others like you. Call today because we have a special gift just for you. Our free gift pack filled with invaluable information. Call 1-800-493-3762. No credit card needed. And when you call today, you'll receive your gift pack fast because as a free bonus, we'll expedite it. And you'll get a coupon for your facial analysis. See your new look, a $300 value free. So call 1-800-493-3762 now. Tuesday, what would you do if your church allowed Muslims to pray at the altar? Here's how one woman responded. Find out why she risked her life to criticize Islam. Plus, is your head throbbing? America's pharmacist Susie Cohen has the headache remedy. She'll show you how to stop them and prevent them from starting again. Tuesday on The 700 Club. Here, 
were committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years and to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us regent. Put on a plug for Regent University. You just saw that. And uh, listen, we've got nearly 20,000 graduate students. We have from Regent, a governor, uh, 31 judges, a number of state legislators, uh, military officers. We have a couple of Congress people, diplomats, and hundreds of other pub public servants. Uh, it's a tremendous school. And uh, uh, the one of the top Ten law faculty in the nation, according to the Princeton Review, and Regent has one of the top ten uh, online uh, bachelor's degrees, uh, according to U.S. News World Report. So, if you want a really quality education, you can do it online in many, many, many disciplines. Here's the address. It's on your screen right now. Uh, you can uh, dial in and get that number and call, or you can go to www.regent. Edu, and uh, it's fantastic education, and it's available online in many, many disciplines, undergrad and graduate, about 58 different programs, and so it's it's all there for you. And uh, I'm so thrilled about this MOOC. They just started this mass open online. They've almost got 10,000 students signed up after a couple of months. 130 different nations involved. Wow! wow. In two months' time. That's fabulous. Yeah. That's going to be a great thing. It sure is. Just getting okay, started. Okay, let's too. go. Okay, time to bring it on with some of the email questions that you all have submitted. Pat, this first one is from Belinda, who says, I heard you say that you believe that the church will live through the tribulation. Can you give me your opinion about preparedness slash stocking up on food and essentials? As usual, I'm confused. Should I believe God will provide, or should I be like the virgins who had plenty of oil when the bridegroom <laughs> arrived and prepare for the worst? Well... I tell you what, regardless of the tribulation, uh, we'll have times when there'll be hurricanes, there'll be power outages, uh, there'll be uh, earthquakes, there'll be all kinds of disasters that come about. And if in such an occasion, if you have fresh water, uh, if you have a source of food, uh, if you have some flashlights and a battery radio and a few things like that, and a first aid kit, you'll find that you might survive, whereas you wouldn't otherwise. So I think it just makes sense to have a week or two of, of supplies. But in terms of some massive problem, an asteroid striking the Earth or something like that, there's no way you're going to prepare for that. So I think the thing to do is trust the Lord. And the Bible says, occupy till I come. So let's spend our time getting people to the Lord and doing His will not spending our time worrying about when the tribulation is going to happen and what's going to how we'll survive it. Just trust in the Lord in that one. But having a couple of weeks' supplies of, of anything, dried food or whatever, is smart. Mm -hmm. Wise counsel. Okay. This is Tina who says, My husband and I divorced after 10 years of marriage. With infidelity hanging over our marriage, I knew I could never look at my husband again. We have both since moved on, and I am now in a relationship out of wedlock. God says that marriage after divorce is a sin, but so is the life I now live. Is there any hope for salvation, or am I now doomed to hell? And if not, how do I get back to where I once was and teach my children to live the same way? Uh, Terry, you know, people... I know what you're going to say. Well, no, they don't read the Bible. They don't read what it says. The Bible doesn't say uh, marriage after divorce is a sin. It doesn't say that. Uh, it, it says that except for the cause of, it, uh, of adultery. Well, you've got adultery in your case, so the, you, you are perfectly free to remarry. But what you're doing now is cohabiting. That's fornication, and that is a sin. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you really are in love with this guy that you're living with, get married. No problem. No. Simple as that. <laughs> it's simple as, I don't know how simple it is. I mean, make sure he, he, he's the one. Yeah, for certain. And for make certain. sure he, he's a, he loves the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Sandra who says, I work with an atheist, and at one time I thought I could witness to her and bring her to Jesus. She gets openly hostile at the mere mention of God. She gets very angry just hearing the word God. Should I just abandon the idea of being a positive influence on her and just let her perish? 
I don't know if you're dealing with something that is demonic or something is deeply ingrained, but I mean, to be that openly hostile to the word God, something mm -hmm. is, is something beyond normal it's human experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something has happened and she associates God. Maybe she had an abusive father, uh, somebody who uh, raped her and then acted like he was, you know, preaching to her from the Bible. You, you just never know what's going on in somebody's childhood. All you can do is be understanding and be loving and don't try to push anything on her. Pray for her. But if she won't hear, she won't hear. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've done what you can do, but always in love, speaking the truth in love. You know, if you try to start an engine without oil, the engine will get friction and it'll tear itself up. If there's oil, the gears will begin to flow. There needs to be an anointing oil before you start talking to people about the Lord and just pray for that anointing. All right. This is Maricela who says, if someone doesn't forgive others, the Bible says God can't forgive that person. So will that person go to hell? Again, the Bible doesn't say God can't. God can do anything. You know, well, why do we read these things? Well, I, I think the, it comes because, you know, if you want to be forgiven, you're to forgive others. Yeah, but it doesn't but, say yeah. God can't do it. But all right. Um, let's say, what do we do? You know, that's the prayer, the model prayer the Lord gave us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Uh, there's something about us, about being born again. In order to be born again, we have to be willing to accord to somebody else what we're asking for. And I don't know what the problem is, except, uh, you know, be willing to forgive. Well, what was the actual question on that? She wanted to know if, if we don't forgive, and, and God doesn't forgive yeah. us, then would we go to hell for not forgiving? Well, uh, the answer is your sins might hang on. I mean, if you don't have a forgiving spirit, uh, you can have bitterness in your heart, and bitterness in your heart will, will, will it's be like a cancer. It's a canker. It'll eat you up. So I don't know what else to say uh, about that. I don't know whether you, somebody's going to hell or not. That's, that's in God's hands. I can't say one way or the other. I don't have enough information. Okay, here's someone who says, my pastor recently divorced. A few weeks after his divorce became final, he began dating someone who I later heard was an old family friend. Initially, she showed up randomly at our church as a supposedly new member. Pretty soon afterwards, it was obvious there was an attraction between them. I'm friends with him on Facebook, so I often see their pictures taken as a couple. I don't want to defriend him. Even if I did remove him as a friend on Facebook, I'd still see some of their pictures through other friends. It makes me uncomfortable. Should I confront him and tell him to keep his personal life private or just ignore it? Is he in the wrong? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. You know, I do not do this. Move on. <laughs> I do not do this Facebook thing. I'm going to defriend you and kick you off a of face. I mean, yeah. like yeah. that's the ultimate uh, slight. I'm going to take your picture out of my Facebook <laughs> page and you'll longer be one of our Facebook friends. Listen, let the man live his life. He's divorced. Is it? Is it? You, know, you don't know what went on. You Nobody know knows what, goes, what on. goes on behind closed doors. And we shouldn't try to judge somebody on yeah. their marriage. It fell apart and it's too bad. So he's found somebody that he's comfortable with and they're having a, maybe they're going to have a life together. Is there a cause for that divorce? Was there adultery? I mean, I don't know all those things you haven't told me. But I can say to you, don't judge somebody else. You know, judge not that you be not judged. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's, it's, you know, I want to take you out of my Facebook friends. I mean, give me a break. Like, who cares, Terry? <laughs> my dog, by the way, Please has got the, my ex dog has got 35. <laughs> thousand <laughs> Facebook friends. So, Followers. Yeah, right? So Blue, we're going to defriend you on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> please. All right, what's the name? Well, in the Philippines, a young girl named Sandy was born with a hole in her heart. Her parents couldn't afford the surgery that was needed to save her life until they met a team from CBN's Orphan's Promise. Because of a serious medical condition, seven-year-old Sandy cannot go to school like her brother. Instead, she has to stay with her mom while she goes to work. I stopped going to school because I have a bad heart. Sandy was born with a hole in her heart. That's made it difficult for her to breathe or do any physical activity. I feel pain in my chest. 
When I play, I get tired easily. I just sit down most of the time. One night, she was breathing so hard. I rushed her to the hospital. I thought I was going to lose her. Sometimes, I wished her sickness was like a dress. I would have taken it and worn it in her place. It's so hard. Alexandra and her husband knew that heart surgery could save their daughter's life, but their combined income could barely pay for medicine. When someone from CBN's Orphan's Promise met Sandy, we prayed for her and arranged for her to have free surgery to close the hole in her heart. After the operation, we also gave her follow-up care and medicine. The pain in my chest is gone, and I don't feel tired. My daughter is alive! She looks and feels great even when she plays the whole day. I really thank God for CBN. Thank you very much for helping me. God bless you. As a mom, I cannot imagine the heartbreak a parent must feel knowing that their child's life is threatened by a medical condition that they simply can't afford to correct. Sandy's heart was correctable, and it meant she could have a perfectly normal life, but they could not provide that for her. You, if you're a 700 Club member, allowed us to come right into the middle of her need and make that possible, and we want to say thank you. We also want to tell those of you who aren't 700 Club members that this kind of life-changing friendship and assistance happens in people's lives all around the world because of people who join the 700 Club. So come along with the rest of us. You'll be joining thousands of people who are out to touch the world with the love of Christ. Christ. It's 65 cents a day. That's $20 a month. Call the number on your screen. There it is. 1-800-759-0700. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. And our way of saying thank you is to send you visions of the night. This is Gordon's latest teaching on God speaking to us in dreams. You want to get it. So. <laughs> Hey, there are a lot of things going on about dreams. I mean, this this Colton Burpo, you know, he yes, died. And yes, yes. Tremendous uh, story. And uh, T.D. Jace is doing that movie. And uh, there's another one that... that um, well, The God God's is Not, not Dead, dead I mean, movie. Popular. And the <laughs> Noah movie that's out. I don't know how biblically accurate well, that is. Well, they say it's kind it's... of a, a pen against global warming. So you just... <laughs> just look past it and get the message. Past, yeah. right? <laughs> God said, global warming. Yeah. <laughs> Al Gore just gave me a word, and I'm going to flood the earth. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, hey, by the way, I was talking about blue. We've got to have blue on. Maybe this week we can have blue on. He doesn't I haven't have, seen blue in a long time. Yeah, he's got to come back. It isn't 35,000. I misspoke. It's about 3,500 to 4,000. Still quite popular for a dog. He's a very popular. He <laughs> writes to them. He talks to people. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> well, they, you know, we might need some proof of that. But. I mean, we, we had Blue saying, you know, when he was answering questions, he was saying, I don't understand why somebody, somebody would write back. Now, Blue, they talked to him like he, he was a human being. You know, like, like you've got to understand what sin is all about. I think there are some of you who think he's nigh on to a human being. Oh, man. Well, he is anyhow. beautiful. I'll yeah, say he's that beautiful. He'll be here. Lord willing, maybe I can talk to Bill Horan and see if he can bring him in this week. Well, up next... A meth addict gets a crystal clear look at his life. I'd been up for like three or four days, and I said, wow, okay, this is it. I'm going to die. This is it. This is what's going to kill me. Hear how a book saved his life coming up next. From emperors, pharaohs, and kings, God has been always through the ages speaking to people through dreams and visions. To scientists, musicians, and even children. I've had this dream before. It's all happened a couple weeks ago. I've had this dream before. See the dreams that changed our future and learn what to do when God speaks to you. Visions of the Night. Available now. Cell phones are great, but the amount some companies charge is just crazy. Since Connie and I switched to Consumer Cellular, we both get everything we want, and we're paying about half what we used to. Do I have to buy the whole basket? No. Hey, you old cheapskate. Hey, Jack. Why pay for more than you need, right? That's why I keep telling you, Consumer Cellular plans start at just $10 a month. And I'm finally ready. My contract's up. Oh, here's to the end of contracts. Yeah. Well, did you tell him how easy it is to switch? Well, of course I told him. It's really easy to switch. Okay. Consumer Cellular. Simple plans with award-winning service and no contract. 
Start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Activation is free, a $35 value, and we'll ship it free. Or visit a Sears store today. And Consumer Cellular was selected as the exclusive wireless provider for AARP members. Ask about your special discounts. Call 1-800-460-7238. Go online to ConsumerCellular.com or visit a Sears store today. Stephen McWhorter was a teenager when he tried his first joint. Marijuana soon turned to cocaine, and cocaine soon turned to meth. And meth nearly cost Stephen his life. I'd been up for like three or four days. It was kind of just a subtle on the ride home moment where it just dawned on me. And I said, wow, okay, this is it. I'm gonna die. This is it. This is what's gonna kill me. But it wasn't enough to scare me into quitting. When I was 13, I got into bands. I started playing music. When I was 16 or 17, I was the house band for a dive bar. <laughs> That's when I started kind of turning to cigarettes, which went to alcohol, and just escalated to smoking marijuana, to selling marijuana. You would end up in places where somebody would be like, hey, smoke that with me, and I'll share this with you. Next thing you know, you're in a room and you're doing a drug that you've never done before. Then it just became who I am to me. You know, it just became what I do. But the day that somebody said, hey, try this, and it was crystal meth, that was, that was all she wrote. I was like, this, I, I love this. It made you feel good. It made everything seem fun and exciting. It made everything seem like it was okay, even though you knew it wasn't. It took over, um, aggressively took over. I stopped caring about music. I stopped caring about things that really meant a lot to me. You know, people would come up and say to me, man, you are like skin and bones. What's going on? And I weighed 100 to under 100 pounds. I was literally a walking skeleton. If there was ever a point where I was not high and I had any moment of clarity about my life, what was going on, it was horrifying. <laughs> and I just instantly and quickly wanted to go get high again. Because with the drug, you just start deteriorating. And you don't even realize it until you look up and you're like, what happened? Everything is dark. Everything is dark falling apart around me, but I can't stop doing this. It was a kind of just a subtle moment where it just dawned on me. And I said, wow, okay, this is it. I'm gonna die. This is it. This is what's gonna kill me. Uh, my sister was, was intensely burdened to pray for me through just, I think, a great deal of prayer. My brother-in-law came to me and gave me this book called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. And I accepted it. I don't even know why. It was like, you know, three in the morning. I was reading this book. And even in this dark spot as I was reading it, and I just felt the truth. I just felt the presence of God in the room. The false joy and happiness that I was trying to fill for all those years on crystal meth, I felt that night in the presence of God. And in that moment, I said, okay, God, if you're real, and I, and I believe you're real. I'm gonna go as far as to say, let's say you're real. Jesus is real. Um, I will give you my entire life. I will stop everything. But I don't know how. I don't know how to quit all this. This is all I've ever been. I can't imagine who, me apart from it. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. In a thought that was more powerful than words, I felt him say to me, you don't have to, I will. I just knew, I was like, he's gonna do this. This is real. He can really save me. This is gonna happen. I just knew that I knew. And I quit everything overnight. What had been a drive to find my next high had now become a drive for God. I just wanted to meet him again. I wanted to keep going after him. I started wanting to express myself and this, this joy and this thing that I'm, I'm realizing, the ability, the gift, the love for music, he, he brought it back and started allowing me to write music again. And today I get to write music full time, Christian music, worship music full time. I get to lead worship, itinerary worship leader, traveling around all the time. What's amazing with that is just like only God, only God could have done that.
I can't take no credit for any of that. I experienced the Zephaniah 317 God, uh, which has become kind of my life verse, is that the Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. He, he delights in you greatly. He quiets you with his love, and he rejoices over you as singing. And from that night in that room, I realized that God was able to pull me out of the wreckage. This God, the God who saves, So when I read that line that says, he rejoices over you as singing, that he sings over me <laughs> as a musician is so powerful to me. There's no such thing as too far for God. <laughs> Do you need God to rescue you today? I don't know what your circumstances are, but what I do know is that God loves you so very, very much, more than you could begin to imagine or ask for. And on top of that, he's able to deliver you out of whatever you have gotten yourself into. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. You can't run away from the love of God. The thing is, to really experience it, you have to accept it. So today, I want to suggest to you that you invite Jesus right into the middle of your mess, like so many of us have, and say, God, I can't do this by myself. I need you. I want you. Jesus loved you so much that before you were even born, and yet while he knew we were all sinners, he died for us, gave everything that he had, took on the sin of mankind so that you and I could live free. If you're not experiencing that freedom, then you're missing out on your inheritance. It's what God created you for. Today, his message comes to you through the story of Stephen McWhorter. He's just one life one of millions and millions that have been set free by the powerful love of Jesus Christ, forgiven, forgiven all, and loved enough that God sings over him today, rejoices over him, quiets him with his love. You know, when we're out there doing our thing, sometimes it's pretty chaotic. Would you like to know the quiet of God's love in your life? Ask him into your life. If you'd like to pray with someone today, there's a number coming up on your screen, 1-800-759-0700. Just say, would you pray with me today? I'm watching the program, would you pray? We want to send you a new day. It talks to you about how do you follow Jesus Christ? Once you invite him in, how do you grow? This is yours for free. Call the number and ask for it. Pat? Thanks, Terry. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on today's edition of the 700 Club. We leave you with today's Power Minute, taken from the book of Isaiah 49, 25. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. Well, tomorrow we've got Susie Cohen, America's pharmacist, to open up her how-to guide on stopping headaches. A powerful story for millions of you who have been suffering from migraines. You don't want to miss it. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Now, this is Pat Robertson. This is an important time in the history of America. It's an important time in the history of CBN. And what you do is so very important now. But we've got to get the gospel out here in America. We've got to help the poor and the needy, feed those who are hungry, clothe those who are naked, bring medical attention to those who are suffering, and more than anything, bring hope to those who are without hope throughout the world. So your 700 Club membership makes a huge difference. And I ask you to go to your phone and call. If you haven't already called in, we appreciate what you've done so much. So don't slack. We don't want our hands to be empty. We want to say, Lord, here are those who have come to you because of my labors. Telephones are available, toll-free line. And we just thank God for each one of you. 
So don't hesitate to call and do it now.